from never come to now. Young, ancient you, so newly born. Old child, you are so close to death. Come in your own shapeless self. Come in your own shapeless self. Wait a minute. Where's the holy meadow? Ah. Where's the small band of dedicated followers? <laughs> no, no, really, we're not supposed to have hordes of adoring multitudes till, till our third year. <laughs> <laughs> Would you excuse me for just a minute, please? <clears throat> Got a bay over there. Ocean over there. <laughs> I'm in the right place. What are you doing? Time. Oh, I forgot about time. Um, bear with me just one more moment, please. Sun to the left, moon to the right. Turn about and fly all night. I did that. Then it was moon to the left, sun to the <laughs> to the left. Oh no, wrong turn at the moon. I hate that. <laughs> oh great, when am I? Would you just give me another little moment here? I think I made a little mistake, okay? Probably already knew that. Probably knew that the minute I opened my mouth and started chanting like a fool. <sighs> Excuse me. Could you help me out? Just ask me a question, please. Any question at all, I, I probably won't even answer it. Who am I? <laughs> Thank you. Um, could you ask me one, please? What time is it? What time is it? Thank you. Um, just one more to get a fix on the time. Could you help me, please? What day is it? What day is it? Thanks. <laughs> See, they keep telling us that a culture is better known by the questions it asks than the answers it comes up with. So I should be able to figure out exactly when we are here. <laughs> uh, oh, no! Am I really in the late 20th century? <laughs> when I come from, we call you the Dark Ages. <laughs> we do, we call you the age of all the answers. It's when people stopped asking questions. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> oh no, they teach us not to talk like I'm real. I have been so rude. Excuse me. My name is Mag, And I am a goddess in training. <laughs> you do believe in goddesses these days, don't you? Yeah, sure. Well, good. <laughs> you should hope so, because if you don't, you're in... most of you don't. <laughs> oh, no, you must think I am such a fool. I'm... A fool in the wrong outfit. <laughs> I hate that. You know, when they issue these get-ups in supply, you know what they say? They say, here, try something bright blue with moons and stars on it. That'll wow the crowd. I'm glad I always wear something basic black, just in case that goes with any goddess, any time. You don't believe in goddesses. How am I going to tell you what I am? I... All right, what do you believe in? Let's start from there. 20th century beliefs. Ha! Inner child. <laughs> Biological determinism. Ha <laughs> ha You believe in that one, huh? Okay, no, that's the right. <laughs> Higher power. That's the right category. Okay, higher power. Higher power, higher power. Money, that's it! I am money! <laughs> Not money, okay. <laughs> Higher power. See also, which 
Angel Shannon, Mystic Bay. Angel. You like that one? That's it. That's it. I am Maggie. And I am your very own personal angel in training. <laughs> Look, this is my first time out solo. I'm on a training exercise from upstairs. And what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to locate seven individuals who have transcended identity, and I'm supposed to help them attain their next level of awareness. It's a very advanced exercise. <laughs> I was doing so well, too, but I've always had trouble with the reality illusion continuum. Doesn't that just get you all the time? I mean, one minute something's fashion, the next minute it's law. I am so tired of being in training. See, I'm not human. Not anymore. Not really. And I'm not a full goddess yet. I'm just stuck somewhere in the middle. And I hate that. If I could just finish this exercise and get No. You know, they've always told us that if there's no small band of dedicated believers, a, a room full of people with love in their hearts would do just as well. So I, I, I could use your help here. Just a little help. Don't look so nervous. You're not going to have to chant or anything, OK? <laughs> but I better double check that for you. <laughs> 20th century rituals. <laughs> take place with the audience seated. Uh-huh. All facing the television set. I right, will pretend this is television, OK? The magic that they grant the ritual maker, that's me, is in the form, is in the form of witnessing the ritual. Oh, this is easy. No, 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 no. This is real basic stuff here. Well, it is where I come from. Um, see, I used to think that magic could occur for the magician alone. That's just not true. What we call magic, it's, it's nothing more than a moment of revelation of our own interconnectedness. Don't you see? You can't have a revelation without someone there to witness what's going on. So I am going to need your help. Just witness what you're about to see, please. Um, you don't have to believe it's real magic. You can believe it's um, performance art. <laughs> <laughs> or just that I'm a good friend that needs to tell you a story. Because I think I can. Oh, this is getting good. <laughs> what do I need then? I need seven people who have no identity. <laughs> <laughs> so what's the key to identity in your century anyway? Identity, 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 gender. We've <clears throat> You really think it's important what gender you are? <laughs> no. <laughs> you only have two genders? What, what do you walk around saying, I'm a man or I'm a woman? <laughs> but you do. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> no, I'm really. <laughs> you are in for a real surprise next century. That's all I can tell you. <laughs> Uh huh. <laughs> and they're real important too. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> so I need seven people who are neither male nor female, neither here nor there, and neither dead nor alive. <laughs> and I get to hold open the gateways to higher awareness for each of them. I love this part. 
See, there are these gateways in time and space, and they're, um, not here. <laughs> well, no, they're not uh, anywhere, really. They're not now. Uh, this is no time. It's, it's no space. It's where you can experience truth. Oh, they really stopped teaching you this stuff, haven't they? <laughs> all right, all right. Um, we all know there's this great big gateway between life and death. But there's other ones, little ones. It's when, it's when you lose your train of thought. It's when, it's when you go blank. It's the distance between my words and your mind. Last lifetime, when I was still human, I would look for these gateways everywhere. And whenever I'd find one, I'd sit in it for as long as I could. People would call me a dreamer. I was, but I don't have to tell you that. But this time, this time, my exercise is to let these seven spirits enter my body one at a time while I hold open the gateways for just a fraction longer than usual, and voila, higher awareness. It's if it works. <coughs> Hello. Hi, I didn't know you were here. Oh, it'll work. Sure, oh, sure, oh, really? it's in the book. The what? They will appear one by one. Sure, they will. They will know or not know why they are here, but what? They will speak their stories as they must, and having spoken, they will move on. Sure, whatever you say. Bye. Huh. You never know when she's going to show up. Oh, this is a piece of cake. OK, what do I need? Chanting, postmodern. <laughs> you call yourselves modern. Oh, that is so cute. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. All right, now remember, remember, you do not have to believe in this. Just. Just witness it. Oh, yeah. Wish me luck. Round about the chalice go. In the chromosomes I throw little X's, little Y's. Days and nights, there's no surprise. Foolish knowledge science has got. Boil thou first in the charmed pot. Single, single, play and mingle. Fire burn and chalice tingle. Penis of a garden snake. In the chalice, boil and bake. Newt's vagina, hair of hog. Teats of sow and tongue of dog. Adder's sperm and blind worm's womb, lizard's testes, egg of loon, for a spell of powerful tingle, like an earth sprite, play and mingle, single, single, play and mingle, fire burn and chalice, tingle, take a pay scale of the man, it's the largest in the land. Take a woman's paycheck now. If you find it, tell me how. <laughs> Add there to a surgeon's blade. Tears of young lad, blood of maid. Make the boundaries move and fade. Single, single. Play and mingle. Fire burn and chalice tingle.
dream I'm on display. I'm a freak. Here's what earthlings say when they are dying. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother. It's working. <laughs> it's really, really working. Interior decorator. <laughs> oh, yo, the heavenly host. <laughs> oh, you must be the heavenly hostess. <laughs> Hi there. My name is Ruby. Ruby Tuesday. So love me. Love my breasts. Love my car. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. You know, I never know what I'm going to say till I get on stage and later I forget anyway, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> I am the character that I create. I am the face that I put on every evening. I am the sex that I have each and every night. <gasps> All right, used to have. <laughs> Well, did I die? But don't you tell us? Well, you make us guess. Do I get 20 questions here? I love this. I'm in heaven for four minutes. I'm already playing party games. <laughs> <laughs> Doris, is that? You know, I swear, I keep thinking I'm seeing that girl everywhere. It's Doris Fish. <laughs> she and I had this great drag act back in San Francisco. We played all the very best bars. Until she died. You know, the first cross-dresser I ever saw was in a movie called All Guess White Slaves. It played on 42nd Street in Times Square, and I took the day off from school to go up to the city and see it. <laughs> now, in this movie, there was a man, and he was wearing stockings and got a belt, and he was being August French maid. <gasps> now, right then, I didn't know who I wanted to be more. That man. Oh, Olga. And I've been in an identity crisis ever since. <laughs> Whoa. Sorry. You know, you never know how bad the pain is till you feel a twinge through all this morphine. <laughs> Doesn't hurt when you're dead, does it? No, I didn't think so. That means I'm still alive. It's pretty funny, because I didn't think I was going to last this long. Where was I? Oh, yeah, I used to read all these books. These books all had titles like He's Her Sister. Get it? <laughs> or Transvestite Marriage. Or Transvestite Trap. My own personal favorites were Bound into Dresses and Captive in Lace. <laughs> you think I'm making these titles up, don't you? Oh, you know I'm not. <laughs> this is what I had to read. This is all I had to read. This is how I learned how to be when I hear... How I learned how to be what I am today. See, look, they told me that if I wasn't a man, honey, I'm not. If I wasn't a woman, that's not... Try and kid anyone here, I'm not one of them either. 
If I wasn't a man, I wasn't a woman, I had to be one of these erotic playthings I was reading about. I had to be a boy in panties or a girl at last. Oh, yeah. Let's not forget, they made him love it. I lived in these books more than I lived in any other part of my life. They were all about these poor, defenseless men who were magically transformed into glamorous women by these cruel, <laughs> heartless dominatrixes. I still didn't know who I identified with more. I compromised. And today, today, I am a she-male. <laughs> you know what a she-male is, don't you, darlings? She-male. That's tits. Big hair, lots of makeup, and a dick. Oh, I know this isn't heaven, so who are you really? <laughs> Doesn't matter. Very grateful for your company. I'm dreaming. <laughs> you know, sometimes when I dream, I am a woman. Sometimes when I dream, I'm a man. Once I dreamed I was both. Oh, last night, last night, I dreamed I got a message in a bottle from Doris Fish. She's the world's most fabulous drag queen. And she was. Anyway, there I was on a desert island, and this bottle washes up on shore, and I pull out the cork, you are so handsome. You just give me five minutes, I'm gonna pop your cork. <laughs> I'm sorry, no, I shouldn't talk like that. Okay, right, okay. Pull out the cork, <laughs> out comes Doris Fish, larger than life, and she grows, and she grows, until she's taller than the entire palm tree under which I am sitting. And she smiles down at me benevolently, as only a true queen can do. <laughs> and she says to me, she says, darling, that's what she used to call me, darling. Darling, people tend to come and go, but drag queens, drag queens are forever. <laughs> that's what she said to me. Um, I, I don't mind dying. What I mind is that it interferes with my art life. It's the lesions. This one here. So I can't sing anymore. And I have one right here on the sole of my foot. So I can't wear my high heels. Then there's this one. It scares people when I walk down the street. So it's the only one I really try and cover up. I used to be glamorous. But, but you never lose glamour, do you, huh? Men would dream about me. <laughs> Women would dream about me, too. And I would. Hey, what's going on here? Hey, what's going on here? I'm floating. I'm, ooh, I'm floating. <laughs> That's funny. I used to think my whole life was nothing but a great big porn book. And right now, right now I'm thinking maybe I didn't make such a bad choice after all. When the whole world said to me, no, you can't, I said, yes, I can. <laughs> and I did. I thought it. Honey? Honey, it's you. <laughs> of course it is. Of course it is, honey. Because honey, honey, drag queens, 
drag queens are forever. <gasps> was as though each part of my body had, had grown its own mouth. These mouths were so hungry that they devoured me with large black teeth until I lay digesting in my own belly. You take real good care of yourselves. You hear me? Oh, here comes another one. Am I sure? She's saying, am I sure? Am joke, right? Put a girl under for sex change surgery, wake her up in front of an audience. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> Oh, don't tell me. Dom Deloise is out here somewhere, and he's going to tell me I'm on candy camera, right? I'm dreaming, right? Someone put acid in my anesthesia. <laughs> this is no dream, this is a nightmare, and I, for one, am going to wake up right now. Not going to wake up right now. Do you want something from me? Got nothing to give you. This, this isn't even my body. <laughs> Jewish proverb, and it goes like this. God created people because God loves good stories. Mm. Is that what you want? A story? Because I can, I don't believe this. Here I am trying to please figments of my own imagination. <laughs> want a joke? How about a joke? You want a joke? Sure you do. Everybody likes a joke. All right, here we go. What did the surgeon say to the patient right before his sex change operation? Give up. The surgeon said, it won't be long now. <laughs> <laughs> A little transsexual humor here. <laughs> Who are you? What do you want? I know. My mother was always afraid that I'd get under the anesthesia and change my mind when it was too late to do anything about it. She'd seen something like that on Geraldo. <laughs> Surgical nightmares next on Geraldo. Is that what you want? You want to change my mind? I have to tell you, I have been making up my mind for over 30 years. <laughs> But you want something, don't you? All right, give you something. What will I give? All right, how about this? How about my first thought? My first thought wasn't that I was a little girl. No. My very first thought was that I knew I wasn't a little boy. Not many options left. Because if I wasn't a little boy, I had to be a little girl. And if I was a little girl, I belonged with the other little girls because I had to belong. <laughs> Even at that age. And ouch! Hey, I felt that. Am, am, I, am I supposed to feel that? I think I need some more anesthesia here. out of life was to spend an entire day walking up and down the streets of this city and I'm just being myself and I'm smiling at people people 
were smiling back at me. That's all. But no. No, I, I had to try on your words. I had to sing your hit parade. What kind of like this? Hi, my name is Kat. I am a transvestite. <gasps> no, that's not right. Hi, my name is Kat. I'm a member of the third sex. <gasps> no, that's not it either. Hello, my name is Kat. I'm a transsexual. Yeah, but it didn't stop there. No. Hi, my name is Kat. I'm an alcoholic. Hello, my name is Kat. I'm codependent. Hi, my name is Kat. I'm a compulsive overreader. Don't you see? I wanted so badly to belong, I would take on any symptom just so I could belong to the support group. <laughs> Hello, my name is Kat. I'm an outlaw. Outlaws don't have support groups. I, I, I just wanted to fit in, somewhere, anywhere. It never worked. Something always got in the way. I didn't belong in the corporate world because I was a radical. I didn't belong in the radical world because I was transsexual. I didn't belong in the transsexual world because I was a lesbian. So I got into politics. <laughs> I did. I joined the revolution. I went on a pro-choice march. I wore this great big button that said, keep your laws off my body. I thought it was particularly appropriate. <laughs> this woman came up to me and she said, what are you doing on this march? I pointed to my button. She said, that doesn't mean transsexuals. I went on a gay rights march. We started early in the morning. We marched all day long. It was glorious. And it wasn't until late that night that I found out the bill we were marching for didn't once mention the word transsexual. See, no matter who wins your revolution, I'm still in Not here to change my mind, are you? Okay. All right. Last night, night before my surgery, I cut myself. Here. Here. To atone, to sacrifice, to bleed. And I watched my blood beat up. I cut myself so I could belong to myself. I cut myself so that anyone doing it afterwards would only be doing it with my permission because I had to first be getting really dizzy. The fact is, each time I found out I didn't belong to something, it became easier to be on my own belong to me. And <laughs> gender is just something else to belong to, isn't it? I think the difference with me is that I've decided to be this gender. No one said this is what I am. I'm saying it from myself. I'm getting real dizzy here. I hope I remember tell you, I ache all over. Do you know what it's like holding open those gateways? Of course you don't. Um, let's see. Uh, do you have elevators in this century? Yeah. You do? You should have known that. <laughs> Simple question. Thank you. All right, now. <laughs> Imagine a pair of elevator doors. And they're closing. And you have to hold them open. But you 
can. But you have to try. And your arms are trembling. And you feel like your heart's going to break from the strain of it. And just when you think you couldn't really pushy. Stop it! <clears throat> if you for one minute think that I'm about to let you come in for... I thought I'd drop on in. See, I know Miss Maggie's game. There's lots more of her around. See, I died three years ago. I've been watching all this time. And all that time, she's the only one asked to speak to me and my kind. So for all that time, for three long years, I've been the chill. Goes up your spine. When you hear good jazz. That's right. I've been the ghost of swing. I've been the poltergeist in your parlor piano. Solid, Jackson. Hey, it's good to be back on the stage again. Righteous. I, there's no piano. Don't that just figure? But hey, dig this. That's you can do. That's you can do this side of life. Listen to me. Listen to me, please. From what I figured out, that's what you're supposed to do. All I ever wanted to do was blow my horn, tickle my ivories, make my music. Damn, those girls came round when I made my music. Silent Jackson. I don't make music anymore. Now, all that talk about music and heaven, forget it. I sold my piano before I died. They buried me without my horn. I want to date them, dead man. <laughs> oh, I'm just jiving you. I am. <laughs> my wife left me after 16 years. See, I never told her that I was a woman. After I died, the word got around. She swore she never did know. That's a mighty big regret I have, mighty big indeed. If you see her, would you tell her I am so goddamn sorry I never said anything? Her name's Kitty, you do that for me? Thank you. Thank you kindly. Dig it. Dig it. Have you ever wanted something so bad? It made you crazy not to have it. Man, that was my music. Can you dig? I had this music building up in my brain, and they said to me, they said to me, honey, swing is for men. <coughs> honey. I could have been a girl singer in one of the bands, but I didn't want that. I didn't want that treatment. I had this music going round and round in my head. Look, I tried being a woman, I did. I even wore a dress once. <laughs> found this club. Found this one club where all the members of the band were these old men. They would let me sneak down there every night and let me blow my horn. Behind the curtain. Man's got to do what a man's got to do. But I couldn't sleep. 
I wouldn't eat. I was delirious, happy, can you dig? Man, there is nothing, nothing I want to be closer to than my music. And I knew that. I knew that back then. One night, I went down to this club. After a year of blowing my horn behind that curtain, it was all closed up. I never found out what happened to it. I never saw those old men again. I went crazy nuts. I started drinking. I drank for an entire week till I passed out. I woke up in some alley. These kids, they were kicking me. They were saying, hey, mister, mister. And I thought to myself, mister, mister. And I said, yeah. Yeah, why not, mister? And I knew. I knew when I was Billy. I was Billy from that moment forward, and it felt right. Lord, it felt right. Nothing in my life had ever felt so right. Look, I was no Art Tatum, but I got the gigs. I did. I was a hit with chicks like you. I was. I was a perfect gentleman. Takes a real woman to make a perfect gentleman. <laughs> and Kitty never knew. In 16 years of marriage, that woman never once saw me naked. I'm here to tell you, that is not an easy thing to accomplish. <laughs> I wanted to tell her. I did. I'd say to myself, I'd say to myself, next week, next week, I'm going to tell her. You know what happened? That week became a month. That, that month that turned into a year. You know that tune. But dig it. I cut an album. I did. And it was Sally Jackson. Are you? If Miss Maggie is my peeved with me. <laughs> Miss Maggie, I know you can hear all this. I'm, I'm very sorry for the way I broke into your little party here. I just, I just didn't know where to say all this to you. Came along. I... Please forgive me and hear me out. She's letting me through. There she is. Thank you. Kindly. I was 73 years old when I died. I'm here to tell you. I'm here to tell you I have to be a man. I have to be a man because, because this world hates me. You know what I'm talking about, don't you, young bitch? <laughs> it's the hatred. It's the hatred holds them apart, one side against the other, like, like two bad notes out of two forever. So I had to be a man. You know, I started reading the newspapers right after I died. They all like to make it out. I did all this because of my music. I love my music. But maybe, maybe I just love Kenya. Maybe I was just one ornery old bulldagger got away with it all. I don't know. Maybe that's what I was. Tell my kitty. Tell her I love her. Sally Jackson. <laughs> Gotta do what a man's gotta do. <laughs> Indeed! Look, it's bad enough that they traipse in and out of my body like it was some sort of train station. But when they've been dead for a few years, it's like, it's like they haven't wiped their feet. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm supposed to have the patience of a saint. For all I know, I may even be a saint in your century. I don't know how these things work. Oh, man. Amazing grace, how 
sweet the sound. All right, who is singing in my mouth? <laughs> that saved a wretch like me. Wonderful, who's next? Judy Collins? Oh, I want church social groups. I do. I go to church every Sunday. I sing in the choir. I... All right, falsetto, but who's listening? <laughs> <sighs> My name is Mary. Well, it used to be Peter. But when I started my change, I decided to name myself after Mary Magdalene. She's supposed to have started up her own version of the church, you know. I... <laughs> this is in hell. You all look very nice. <laughs> That's funny. I could have sworn I was sitting in a little Greek diner somewhere having a cup. I hope you didn't get the wrong idea about me from what just happened in that diner. I can explain everything, really. I can. See, I always wanted to be a woman. I always wanted to have babies. And I was so afraid of hell. I knew they were saving a place just for me, so I would read the Bible all the time, so when I'd end up in hell for all of eternity, I'd be able to comfort myself by repeating Bible phrases back to myself over and over again. I really like the make joyful noise parts. I always do make a joyful noise whenever I can. I tried to lead an exemplary life in Christ. Even now, during my change, I'd still try to be charitable. You know, like Jesus. I think that's what got me in trouble. Couldn't have been more than a few hours ago. I, I was on my way to my surgeon's office for an appointment. He was on the Upper East Side. It was rush hour. The train station was packed. There was this large crowd of people up ahead. They were all trying to avoid this old man who was blocking the passageway. I could hear him. I could hear him about the whole crowd. He was saying things like, lady, got a quarter. Or he'd say, mister, 25 cents, please. You know, things like that. And I was reaching into my purse to get him some change. When the motion of the crowd brought me almost face to face with him. He was so grimy. He stank of urine and wine. He, he looked right at me and he said, he said, lady, He said, Mister? He said, Hey, what the fuck are you anyway? And he started to laugh. Yeah. He laughed. He just laughed. And 
the motion of the crowd carried me further down the passageway, and I could still hear him laughing. And that was hell. I am. I decided I should go upstairs and get a breath of fresh air. So I did. And I walked by this little Greek diner. And I wanted to go in and collect my thoughts. And over a cup of very bad coffee, I realized, I realized I hadn't given him any money. I hadn't been very charitable. Over my second cup of coffee, I realized I didn't want to be charitable to the son of a bitch. And over my third cup of coffee, I realized that even if I lived my life exactly the way Jesus had, I was still going to go right to hell for who I was, for what I was becoming. And you know what? I started to laugh. I did. I laughed. I just laughed. They actually threatened to call the police to get me to leave, but I stood up. And I shouted as loud as I could. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither bond nor free. There's neither male nor female. We are all one in Christ Jesus. Third Galatians, verse since I realized just now I'm definitely going to hell no matter what happens, I've got this funny feeling that, that I might not go. And that, that makes all the joyful Bible verses make sense. Doesn't it? That makes life Sweet. Can I go now? Um, I have to pay for my car. Okay? Okay. Oh! Thanks for listening. Are you even human? Oh, I can hear the bones in my face breaking. Oh God. I can see the National Enquirer now. Transsexual. Saved. By space aliens. 
Not that I'm transsexual, mind you. I'm not. I'm not. I'm. All right, I'm transsexual. No more hiding. I know my name. The children could always spot me anyway. Are you a boy or a girl? They'd always ask. I'm. You look awfully hip to be space aliens. <laughs> Maybe I'm dreaming. No, if I were dreaming, I'd be in a commercial. I know, I always am. I know all the words. I'm on. On my. Planet. <laughs> we talk. <laughs> like this. We say, I've come a long way, baby. <laughs> and I'm not even a model. We say, what makes me different can make me beautiful. Because some women are more ultra than others. <laughs> and we say, I'm worth it. <laughs> are you real? I think you're Memorex. <laughs> the guys who were beating up on me, they didn't know if I was a real woman or not. As hard as I've tried, as much as I'd buy, they'd still spot me, they'd still hurt me. Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Do you know what it's like to be hunted down just because you're different? Of course you know, the space aliens. <laughs> you had to pass as human, didn't you? It's so hard to pass, isn't it? It takes so much attention, doesn't it? You have to watch everybody's reaction to you all the time, don't you? You have to read all the magazines to see how to do it. I wonder if we read the same magazines. You, I, I am not getting through to you, am I? <laughs> On my planet, we talk like this. We say, I've come a long way, baby. Sometimes I Sometimes I need a lot. We say, now I can have the body I've always wanted. Juicy, mouth, watery, color. And we say, take a bite. I know I'll be asked about all the products. Don't look at me like that. If you lived on Earth, you would too. <laughs> but then the ads taught me to be a flirt. So I was. So they hurt me. I've <sighs> they have knives now. The sound of them cutting just under my ear. The sound of meat being carved. You're not a dream, are you? You're not. Oh God, I must be dying. I know my name. My name is Amara. 
On the day of my birth, my grandparents gave me a television set. In 1948, this was a new and wonderful thing. It had a nine-inch screen embedded in a cherry wood case the size, of, the size of my mother's large oven. My parents gave over an entire room to the television set. It was the television room. <laughs> and every day I watched it, it told me what was a man and what was a woman. And every day I watched it, it told me what to buy in order to be a real woman. And everything I bought, I said to myself, I am a real woman and I never once admitted I was transsexual. Isn't that strange? I'm dying. Um. Mm. Well, they say that blood tastes like copper. I. Mm. To me, it tastes more like blood. <laughs> After my surgery, I still didn't know what was a man. Isn't that strange? I didn't know what was a woman. All that advertising, all those commercials, and I, I honestly never believed I was a man. I don't think I actually ever really believed I was a woman. Right now, I don't think I'm one or the other. I've never said that to anyone before. Here's what earthlings say. They're dying. They say, I've come. <laughs> Single, single, play and mingle, come to me, tardy one. Ninety. Eight. Eight. Seven. Eight. The sin is anesthesia anyway. Eighty-six. Forty-two. This is great. No, I've always wanted to have this dream. No, it's true. It's true. Oh, this is really great. I get to talk now, right? Right? You listen. I talk. Oh, this is really good. I like you already. All right, I hope you're listening up really good because i got a whole lot to say. You ready? Okay. Oh, boy. Okay, ready. Here we go. All right, when I was a little kid, right, and I'm growing up in Asbury Park, New Jersey, I would go for a run on the beach with my little dog. Now this would be in the winter time, when the rides was closed and the booths are all boarded up against the snow, right? And me and my little dog, me and my little dog, we would run like the wind. <laughs> I was so afraid, I was so afraid someone would come along and they'd lock me up because I'm crazy. You know why? I'm going to tell you why. See, I used to pretend, I used to pretend I was the last person left. I used to pretend I was a little boy. <laughs> you know what they used to tell me? They used to tell me that it's hormones 
to make a man a man. I gotta tell you something. All this testosterone they got me on, it gives me more muscle mass than I had when I was a woman. I can really pump up now, right? I like that, that's a kick. It makes me bigger. But it's not what makes me a man. People call me sir now. I really like that, that's a major kick. Damn. But I gotta tell you, I gotta tell you about this dream we're in, right? It's the one where I'm on display. Freak. <laughs> Don't look all sad. I love freaks. No, I do. I always have. See, I remember this time. I remember this time when I was still a little girl and my father took me to the circus. I don't remember nothing about that circus except the sideshow. I don't remember nothing about that sideshow as much as I remember Olaf, the world's tallest man. Damn! He was so tall, I had to stretch my neck way back in order to see all of him. <gasps> I wore a brown suit. Isn't that funny how you remember parts like that? He was quiet. He had a lot of dignity. His, his feet, his feet were as long as my arm. His, and his hands, damn! His hands were enormous. He wore these rings on each one of his fingers, which he would sell. Souvenirs. I remember. I remember. I remember I'm standing right up in front of the stage, right? While he's talking about his life. And he's talking and I'm listening. And he's talking and I'm listening. And I don't understand the word man saying. I'm a little kid, right? And all of a sudden, all of a sudden, he starts to bend down toward me. His already immense head is getting larger and larger as he's getting closer to me. And he's still right here. And he smiles at me. And I smile right back. See, he knows me. I know him. And then, then he takes a ring off of one of his fingers. puts it round my wrist. And I know, I know right then I'm just like him. I know I'm a freak. Freaks always know stuff like that. Damn. I got to tell you, I got to tell you, right, when I was still living as a woman, I was in this lesbian relationship, okay? And I remember me and my girlfriend, me and my girlfriend, we would go shopping for dildos, right? Whoa, I got to get something straight, because you're going to go out of here laughing, I don't want you to do that, right? Not all lesbians do that, all right? Not all female, two male transsexuals do that either. I did that in a little star called Good Vibrations. <laughs> you know that place? You do. I, I see you in there. <laughs> Damn, you bought that thing. Oh, wow. <laughs> I hope you're happy with that thing. Damn. Whoa. See these dildos, they come in all kinds of sizes and shapes and colors. I don't know if you know, you ask her. She knows, I like you so much. All right, that's great. All right, whoa. All right, but I remember, right, I'm in this little room they got there, right? It's a little private room with the mirror in it. Whoa, whoa, I'm fully clothed, right? They don't allow no nudity in there, right? It's all on the up and up. All right. So I'm in this little room, right? And I'm looking in the mirror. And I'm holding these cocks right up to my jeans. One by one. I remember thinking, damn. I wish this was mine. Damn. I wish so fucking hard that this was real. Well, I'm gonna tell you why. I'm gonna tell you why right now. See, they used to tell me that it's a penis that makes a man a man. 
They used to tell me, I can't be a man because I don't have a penis. And listen, because I figured something out and it's really important, all right? They never once said to me, it's because I have a vagina. It's because I don't have a penis. Always got to be about penises. You know what I mean? <laughs> you knew you would know what I mean. I like you two very much. All right. <laughs> Well, I'm going to tell you something, right? It comes time for my gender change. I have to decide. Do I want a penis? Do I want a vagina? Do I want them both? I got all these options now, right? It's better than going shopping with good vibrations. <laughs> I like that. I like that. I finally figured I'm going to stick with my vagina. But fuck the penis, who needs that, right? <laughs> you like that too. I like you so much. All right. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something now. And it's a little bit embarrassing, right? But I like you very much, and it's a dream, so what the hell. All right. So this testosterone they got me on. <laughs> oh, shit. All right, I'm going to tell you anyway. This testosterone they got me on, it has made my clitoris grow two and one half inches long. I really like that a lot. It's amazing. <laughs> Whoa, damn. All right. <laughs> my hands, they haven't grown, though. They're still kind of small. All the hormones they give you, they'll make your hands grow. That's how a lot of people can tell I wasn't born male. Somewhere, somewhere in this fantasy world of mine, I have these large, strong, gentle hands. I am standing up on a stage somewhere. Oh, damn! All right, like this, right? Just like this. I am on display. I am a freak, and I am searching through the audience with my eyes, because I'm looking for other freaks just like me. Uh-huh. Yep. Somewhere, somewhere in this fantasy world, I take a ring off of one of my fingers. And I bend down to give it to some child. That one child who's waiting for me to put it round his wrist. Yeah. I like that. One more, one more, and I'm that much closer to being a full goddess. Ho! exercises? No. You know what they say? They say, just go on down there and do it for the humans. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, gosh, I'm sorry. I keep forgetting. See, I'd spend so long Look, you're the closest thing I've had to a relationship with humans. That's got to be a couple of centuries. And I'm not a full goddess yet, so consorting with the goddesses just intimidates me. I don't do it very much. Can I tell you something? 
please. It gets very lonely not being one or the other. It, uh, it gets very lonely not being there. Not being there. It gets particularly lonely when in your beliefs I don't exist. I'm not alive. Look at me. I'm not dead. And if Not alive and not dead. Not here and not there. Not one and not the other. You're saying it's me. I'm the seventh one, right? Oh, that's an awful long way around for a lesson, don't you think? Don't you think? You know, you could have come down and said something. You could have, you could have come down and said, Maggie, Maggie, got some news for you. This is what you are. I would have listened. I would have believed you. And no, you don't work like that. Where are you going? Don't leave me. Oh, please don't leave me. I don't know what to do next. These people are waiting for me to do something. Smart. Would you excuse me for just a minute? Ending the ritual. <laughs> 20th century, Northern California. <laughs> Thank the audience for sharing. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. <laughs> But I do want to thank you. I want to thank you for listening to somebody who's neither one or the other. And look, look, if, if you ever take a wrong turn at the moon someday, don't be afraid. I'll probably be right there with you. You can have a little party, whether you're human goddess, or alive, or dead, or male, or female, or neither. <laughs> neither. Don't forget neither. We can keep each other company. I think that's the deal. <laughs> Not a bad lesson after all. Do you hear that? I said it's not a bad lesson. Not after all.
um, sound designer, Damon Peter Porras, another blondie who composed and played all the original music in here. I want to thank techno wizard Buddy for doing all this wonderful stuff. Um, except that for the hot water on the dry ice myself. <laughs> <laughs> and I want to thank especially, especially um, all the kids here at Josie's because it's I've been all a lot of places and I think it's really the finest place for queer entertainment ever, ever. Please keep coming to Josie's and support this place. It's real fucking important. Um, this show is, this is its last time in San Francisco. I'm really lucky it's run a couple of times. This is it. Um, from here, we're going to New York. It's got an off-off Broadway premiere uh, next week. We're, we're opening in New York um, for two weeks. And from there, it goes to England. And um, it's a three-city tour to London, Manchester, and Liverpool. And I'm really excited about that. Um, so here's the deal. I'll be back, but with another show, hopefully soon. Um, and here's the deal. If you got one of these little cards in the mail that said it was coming, you're cool. Like you're on this list, and it's great. Um, <laughs> if you didn't get one of these little cards, you need to get on this list. It's a little mailing list. It's a little book out there. Please sign your name and address. It's real important, because that way, when I'm coming back to town, I'll let you know, and you'll be able to come um, or avoid me. <laughs> Whichever is like important to you. <laughs> Which brings me to the next point. This is the last thing I'll be saying. Um, the way we're getting audiences, uh, the, the best way I know in the world to get audiences is to ask people this question. And I mean this from my heart, please. If you enjoyed the show tonight, if it meant something to you, to raise some questions, I'm really delighted. Um, when you get home tonight, please. Please, I know it's a little late, but call three people that you love and tell them to come to see the show. That's really important. I appreciate it. And here's the worst thing I have to say. Um, if you did not like the show, don't tell me. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to hear it. Um, <laughs> work too hard. Um, <laughs> but if you did not like the show, right, when you get home tonight, Please, call three people you despise. <laughs> <laughs> well, then to come. Everybody